Here's the latest thing that I've been doing. I took uh, a bunch of those red colored uh, woods and uh, put them in, made squares in a contrast between the, the reddish color, the red heart, and purple heart, and paddock. And then I got a, uh, maple, hard maple, uh, in between them there to make a contrast to them. Now I wanted to have uh, the grain going one direction on the colored woods and the opposite direction on the uh, the uh, maple, but the, the grain in the maple doesn't stand out as sharply as it does on the yellow one. So, but that uh, made it good in the shows the different colors. And I've done the same way on the sides here. I've got the uh, three different red, red heart, purple heart, and uh, paddock there. And I, instead of an ebony that I had for the border, I used walnut because I didn't like working with the ebony. And I got the, with the grain here with the red oak. And the bottom down here, I got the same thing. This, uh, the squares. And this, the, the uh, paddock here and on, on there stands out a much more brighter red than, than the uh, red heart and the purple heart. So, well, it was a kind of an interesting little project. So, just something to keep me busy. So, I got to come up with another kind of uh, project with different shapes and so forth. So, but it was. Just something to keep me busy, so. Now, uh, here's another couple of pieces that I got out of the uh, uh, green locust uh, crops that my friend Jim gave me. And uh, I turned out two pieces out of that, and it's got a pretty interesting grain pattern in there. It showed up in some of the the uh, sap wood on the outside there, so. But it came out with quite interesting the way the grain worked out after I got some varnish on it and brought out the colors of much better, so. But it was a, kind of an interesting thing. It took a long time in the summertime there with a high humidity for it. It didn't want to dry out very good. And this one here was the same way. To, I, turned it out and then I got some uh, uh, sap wood along the edges here and made out a kind of an interesting grain pattern. So, But it was a, an, a good challenge for trying to get it to dry out with the high humidity we had last summer. So, so. Uh, Here's the latest uh, project that I've done. It's a little bit different woods and a little bit different shape in there. It's, uh, I used some uh, Osage orange for some of this color here instead of the uh, maple stuff in there. But this is red heart and then the purple heart and Wenji in the middle here. And this here's a paddock for the knob on the top. So, but it's a little different there and we'll see what it, uh, this uh, Osage orange, if it does change color over the time, we'll see. But this, I've got three different kinds of red here. This uh, red heart, purple heart, and paddock in here. But I made this a little narrower, and then the uh, oak in between is a little wider on this thing here. But uh, I'm kind of disappointed in the shape of this come out. And, Look as good. So, but it was another interesting one. The bottom has got the same kind of thing on there. And this is a zebra wood for on the bottom of this part. So, that was a little, and the inside is going along about the same. So, but it was a kind of good, another challenge there. To, try to get some different shape, but I'm kind of disappointed that this didn't stand out as great as it 
is the, the chevrons that I had on the previous one. So, but it was a good chance to try some different kind of woods and so forth. So, here's the latest project that we did. Uh, John and Carol thought this was a pretty well proportioned uh, little woodworking thing that I did some years ago. So I just took the same thing and expanded it up to the full size I could do on my lathe. And I used all kinds of scrap uh, red oak pieces in there and glued them together so it's a lot of little pieces. So I don't know whether that looks like it's, just, it's lost its uh, good, interesting shape after it's expanded up into this large side. But anyway, it was a good experience. And, good experiment to play around with some odd pieces of wood that I had, so. Here are the two latest projects that I did, both of them at the same time. They uh, replaced a couple of them that I didn't like the way they turned out. They both got five pointed stars in the bottom. One of them is surrounded with red oak, and the other one is surrounded with walnut. So. And this one just got a single row of red in there. And this one's got three rows of red colored wood in there. So but they were just a, got a bead on the bottom and a bead up on the top to make it more look like a bowl with handles on it. So, and this, so it's a, just another interesting project to use up some, some of the woods that I had left over from other jobs. So. That's just the latest thing, and I just kind of enjoyed the, the working with a different colored wood all of a sudden in there to get a different pattern. So, so that's the latest project. This shows the latest uh, woodworking project that I've done. This is a replace uh, another one that was just like this, only it was. Uh, it had a difference in the edges, so here I put a red oak border around it to dress it up a little bit. In the same way on the bottom, the other one just had the triangle to go all the way out, but this one's got another red oak border around the bottom to dress it up a little bit. So, But other than that, it follows the same pattern as the rest of them. It's got the... the uh, triangles in the bottom and then the six rows of triangles going up the sides of it there. So yeah, it was just another nice, interesting project to duplicate of what I did before. So it shows uh, pretty much the uh, one that was given away. So that's the latest project that I've done so far. So. Here's the last thing that I've been doing here. It's a thing with all three quarter inch squares of walnut, maple, and red oak. But there's a different pattern the way they're arranged in the bottom here. You can see that they're not just a, the same pattern all the way through. There's definite sections that, that are different. So, there. so you wind up with a different pattern on the outside. Different and different wood show up in this different places. So it was just a little change from what I've been doing, having all the layers of segments and going up there. John and I talked about this, making the vertical segments to get a different kind of a pattern. So it's just another interesting thing to keep me busy. Well, here's the latest project that I've done that's gotten away from the big tall ones that I had. And this one has got a star in the center and a walnut around it. And then the rest of it has got red and white stripes like the flag. Here's a star like the flag and then there's red and white stripes and like the stripes on the flag. So, But it was a little interesting thing that 
get a deviation from the tall things that I did. And also I'd use up some of the uh, leftover, there was some red heart at the bottom here and here. And I thought that uh, maybe this was mistaken, maybe I thought it was pad paddock, but so then I got some paddock in the center here. It's a little bit different color, but from one board to another the color would vary. So, well, it was just a different departure from from what I've been doing, so just a new version of a, another kind of a bowl, small bowl. So, so this is the uh, most tedious and the time-consuming part of this whole operation of making these different kinds of woodworking projects. When I grew up, uh, 16 of these segments together, there might be variation in the thickness of the wood. And there might be slight misalignment when I glue them together the way they come out. So, but I got uh, 16 segments, and I put the uh, ink lines around there, all the way around several of them, so that I know when they disappear, the nut surface is flat, and I got a good surface for glue. So, and I advance, losing about a third of a segment, so uh, it takes about. 48, 50 stripes to make a circle. So I may take uh, anywhere from 15 minutes or 20 minutes, a half hour, if some of them are kind of irregular. So, but then I keep swiping it like this. I make about uh, 50 swipes for one circle, then I make about three circles, then I'll take it over and look and see what's disappearing and I know how well I'm getting it flat. So it's quite a time consuming thing and, and it's uh, tiring. So but that this part of the job that's got to be done. Here's the latest uh, woodworking project. Uh, it's a little different than what I've been doing because they got a little different shape to it. It's got a raised section here in the bottom and another little raised one at the top here for a handle. So it's easier to handle if you got it full of certain food and stuff like that. And they used up uh, some of the exotic woods that I had. <coughs> This is the uh, Osage Orange there, and uh, Wenji here, and then some more Osage Orange, and then there's the Red Oak, and then Maple with Paddock, and uh, Maple segments in the center part here, and another uh, Maple there, and uh, with the top up here with the Red Oak again. So uh, you can see in the bottom there, it's got the center section there, and then the Wenji around the outside of it there and so forth. So it was a little different in the shape of it and in the choice of the woods that I've been using. So it was just another little experiment and trying to get a, a different type of design so that it, it uh, be a little different from what some of the other things that I had. Because this raised section on the bottom kind of makes it stand out. And also the top up here has got a raised section that makes a handle handling it. So that was just another little exercise in wood turning. So and then to find a little different design, a different shape. So.